All righty. Well, it is 930 here in Seattle and we have the recording started and a full agenda. So I think we'll go ahead and get things started here today. Um, welcome to our March 2023 community call. We are so glad you are here. We like to keep these um, community calls very informal and interactive. So be sure to use the chat as we go along, ask any questions that come up. Feel free to also use the raise hand feature and Teams if you'd like to um, come on your mic and ask a question. In addition, we always have a GitHub discussion for every community call where we collect agenda items and especially community demos as we lead up to the call. Um, feel free to continue to post questions there and have conversation there during this call as well. Um, and as always, we invite community demos and contributions to the call. So if you have ideas for next month's call, um, please do add them as well. With that, we will get things started um, with Aditya. Hello, everyone. So I'd like to announce that we uh, on uh, Tuesday we released PowerShell 740 Preview 2. This is the first PowerShell uh, release that's based on .NET 8, uh, particularly on .NET 8 Preview 2. So we look forward to uh, community using it and giving us feedback. Uh, we uh, expect to go back to monthly releases from now on, now that uh, .NET is also shipping every month. Uh, we I want to uh, call, do a special call out to uh, Carlo, uh, Carlo Toso and Martin GC94, who had lots of contributions in this release, and there are many other uh, excellent uh, contributions from the community. Uh, I'll post a list of them in the chat. And uh, looking forward uh, to get more usage on that and lots of feedback and lots of issues. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, this was a great release for us to get out there. And when I was going through the change log, I noticed so many community contributions, which was really awesome to see. So thanks for all the support there. Um, next up, we have Anam talking about PowerShell Get 3.0 Preview 20. Hey guys, I just wanted to mention that we have PowerShell Get 3.0 Preview 20 coming out soon, probably within the next week or so. Um, this includes a rewrite we did that moves us off of using the NuGet APIs and instead we're using HTTP requests from the client side. Um, and we expect that that's gonna show a big perf improvement. Um, we would also just love to get community feedback on that when that gets out. And then we are hoping to get that incorporated into the next or upcoming PowerShell preview. Um, yes. And we also feel like this is going to get us closer to RC. Awesome. Yeah, this is a really big release for PowerShell Get. Um, as Anna mentioned, we are planning to ship this release of PowerShell Get along with our compatibility module in PowerShell 7.4 Preview 3, which will come out in April. So that'll be our next PowerShell release. We'll include PowerShell Get 3.0. So that's really exciting for us and takes us a big step closer to RC and GA of this module. Yes. Um, with this, um, we also have a docs announcement related to PowerShell Get from Sean. Yeah, so um, with having a new version of PowerShell Get and having multiple versions in uh, supported in different versions of PowerShell, um, we're going to move the docs for PowerShell Get to its own doc set uh, and its own set of docs pages. That way we can uh, have a version selector for the version of uh, PowerShell Get. It'll make it a little easier uh, to find the right documentation. Uh, and we'll move the PowerShell gallery content uh, there as well. So look forward to that sometime in April. Um, uh, it, it'll be similar to what we did for DSC when DSC was removed and uh, we created its own doc set. Uh, it'll be the same kind of experience. So uh, look for those changes, like I said, sometime in April. Awesome. Yeah, we really appreciate the effort to move those docs to make the experience of reading them a little bit better. Um, next up, we have Stephen talking about the PS read line. Um, two, three, beta zero release. Cool. Um, hi, everyone. Let me actually stop sharing one screen and share another to kind of highlight some stuff. Give me one second. But uh, we did a, a PowerShell 
or PS read line 2.3.0 preview zero uh, last week. Um, this included a number of new features. Uh, I'm going to post the link to the blog post, uh, kind of highlighting some of the main features um, in the chat there. And then I will share my screen to just show off uh, a little bit about what is included in this in this new preview. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, one of the, the the biggest thing uh, in this preview is uh, the introduction of scrollable list view, um, and so uh, we've we've kind of had had some complaints about the the number of um, uh, results in list view being limited to ten, uh, especially when you get multiple predictors, uh, it can get pretty tight. And so we have introduced now a scrollable list view that increases the max size to 250, and so you can now navigate. We we're reta we're retaining the ten uh, list view results shown, uh, but um, you'll see here when, so right now I have history predictor, history predictor enabled and AZ predictor enabled, and I also have the completion predictor enabled. So if I do get AZVM and I do a dash here, you'll see I now have um, three predictor results being shown, and I can use the up and down arrow keys to navigate further and uh, down the list. And so um, we've also included this metadata line here, this line above here to help uh, you understand where you are with uh, the scrollable list view. Uh, this shows what cursor you're at and then the number of total results available. You can see it's more than 10 in this example. Um, we also include kind of a deeper navigation so you can know which uh, index of predictors you're in. So you'll see here that as soon as I switch from history to AZ, um, it will switch here, uh, showing that I am in the AZ predictor results, and I'm one of five of those results. And as if I keep going down, you'll see it, it incrementing. And then once I get to the completion predictor, it will uh, go this way. Um, so that's that's the probably the biggest change uh, in in this this uh, preview. Uh, we'd love your guys' user feedback uh, with this and. Um, Let's see what other what other stuff do we include? We included a lot of bug fixes. Um, oh, additionally, we have uh, new key bindings to help you navigate through this this larger set of list view. Um, I'm on a laptop right now, so I, unfortunately I can't show it. But um, you can use the page up and page down to move, you know, a, a ten page um, segment, uh, a, a ten result segment in in list view. Um, but you can also use control plus page up and page down to navigate to the next predictor. So if I were to pre press control uh, page down, I would go immediately to this line here to the completion predictor. But like I said, I'm on a laptop, so I actually don't have the, the, the keys, but um, it's, uh, yeah, you can use that to help navigate yourself through there. Uh, another change we have in this release is a auto adjusting size. Um, so we were getting complaints that uh, when users had list view enabled, um, it would sail, it would fail silently when uh, your window height would be too small. And so we have changed that now, um, so it can be adaptive. So I'll just make my window smaller here. If I do get, you'll notice that now I get only three results, but I can still have the same scrolling capability um, uh, that I just showed. Um, this is great in, in CloudShell, which, which is Windows is a little smaller than the default 10. Um, I can also, we also now have, if I create, if I make the window too small, let's see if it will show. Yeah, there you go. So when I have list view enabled, we will give you now a warning that the terminal size is too small to show the list view. Right now we have a minimum set uh, height to show three results. So this is kind of the minimum here, but uh, any smaller than this, we will, we will present that warning just so you know that that's what's going on. Um, let's see, what other what other things have I missed? Um, oh, another small fix that maybe uh, maybe was an encounter, but um, we have uh, worked on getting rid of duplicate results. So there was occasionally times when history would contain the same results as a predictor. Um, and so it would kind of be a little confusing and in sort, of, sort of in order to free up the real estate for more prediction results, we have uh, enabled deduplication so that um, history will be kind of the, the main one that has the, the, uh, the predictor um, or has the result and anything that has a sy syntactically matching result will be uh, um, 
taken away and then the next result from that predictor will be shown. Um, so that's just a little experience change. We also just made a slight change to the um, uh, inline view. It's very minor, but you can notice it's a little bit more uh, italicized, so it's easier to read on uh, terminals that don't have a pure black background. Um, other fixes you can read up in the blog post that I posted in the chat, or you can see the change log that I'll uh, post as well in a moment here. But yeah, I think that's it. Awesome. Thank you, Stephen. Um, appreciate the demo. It's so cool to see so many new features coming out in PS Read Line. Next up, we have a docs update from Sean. All right. I'm going to post some links in the chat for um, what's going on in docs. Let me share my screen here. Um, as always, wanted to point out um, we have our updates page that shows uh, what's come out uh, new each month. Um, we talked about this a little bit uh, and announced this last month, this preventing script injection attacks, new article from our own Paul Higginbotham, and some updates to some about topics and a new DSC article. Um, this month, uh, Mikey Lombardi has added another DSC article here about creating class-based resources um, to work with Azure Auto Manage's machine configuration. So take a look at that. Uh, and then we've been doing a lot of updates for the uh, 7.4 Preview 2 release. Um, uh, as you can see, uh, contributors like Martin GC94 and uh, Carlo Toso, tons of improvements on, uh, especially in the web commandlets area and uh, command line completion things. Lots of great uh, convenience updates here. Um, and then I wanted to um, talk about our quality improvement project. This is um, targeted at you folks, the community contributors who want to help us with documentation. And we'll be using this um, as our, uh, uh, to host a dockathon at PowerShell Summit in April. So if you're coming to Summit and you want to try your hand at uh, contributing to documentation, we'll be there in person to help you out and take you through the process and um, get you some recognition in the community too. So th that's what I had for docs. Awesome, thanks, Sean. The community docathon at Summit sounds like a lot of fun. Um, next up, we have um, convert text table demo from Jim. Hey, you should be able to see me and hear me at this point. And yep. then I will share my screen, my text window. Let me, should be able to see my console. One of yep, the, good. one of the, the uh, modules we have in the gallery is uh, Microsoft.PowerShell.TextUtility. And uh, we've been spending a little bit of time in it lately. And one of the things that we've, uh, we've done is uh, created a uh, table converter, a text table converter that allows you to automatically uh, get content from an execute from a native executable and, or a file, and then uh, convert that into an object. Um, what you're looking at here is a, a is a bunch of files. Uh, let me just uh, show you one of the files. This was just the output of of uh, of PS on a Mac, and you can then just automatically convert it into a table. This is now uh, a custom object. Has the There's a number of different features that this has if I wanted to actually um, give this thing a name, I can give it uh, a name. I can give the object, the output object a name, and now I can hook it up to our um, I can hook it up to our formatting if I want to. 
Um, another thing that another feature that this has is it will convert those things that it can into a particular uh, type. So if I add the convert the convert parameter to this, and we'll send this to get member uh, just so you can see what's going on. You can actually see now that I've converted um, the strings into uh, integers or time spans. That way you can use the use it with the rest of the uh, use it with the rest of the system to use the where uh, uh, you know where the, all the filter uh, commandlets and all the rest of it. It will work. It works on um, on on Windows content as well. This is a this is of course a task list output. And you can actually then take this uh, text texture output and then convert it into more easily convert it into uh, uh, objects that can be used with PowerShell. If I actually if wanted to sort these things by uh, the pin, for example. So you can, so you really legitimately converting all of this textual data into object data. Uh, this isn't yet available on the uh, on the gallery, but uh, we're working on on that now. So look forward uh, to get that out into folks' hands and get some feedback. One quick question for you there: Is of that course. always white space still limited? It is always. Well, there's one more additional thing that you can do with this. Uh, uh, if you have this crazy file, right? You can actually, you can actually, um, do it on a column offset basis. Awesome. That's exactly what I needed because I've got some fields that where the, the headers actually have their, you know, a space in them. Uh, if, if there are spaces in the headers, um, th those will get picked up. Um, so it's not just the it's not just the white space that's in the header. It's actually looking through the entire text output uh, and looking for white space that is that is consistent in a column, and then decides to make the uh, make the <clears throat> the uh, break up the columns in that way. Uh, I'm but, looking forward to this. Thank you. But then this also has. Uh, but you can also then just be uh, direct about it. Uh, uh, we'd love to get input on on uh, enhancements and what like this uh, as as we uh, as it gets released. Okay. Any awesome. Other Very cool, Jim. I guess if there are more questions, we'll um, get to them in the chat. Yep. Um, from there, we will go on to Tess, who is going to give us an update on SSH Mark of the Web. Yes. Hi, folks. Um, last time, I think we talked about um, removing the Mark of the Web from OpenSSH for SFTP uploads. Um, earlier this week, we ultimately decided to remove it fully from both SCP and SFTP downloads um, based on the community feedback that we received from the beta releases. Um, this was also done for a couple other reasons. Um, after consulting with experts on Mark of the Web, they agreed that any security benefit would be minimal and that um, it's not worth the impedance on the user experience and um, anyone familiar with using SCP and SFTP would also probably have the knowledge to run unblock file and remove any mark of the web that was added. Um, and secondly, we wanted to be consistent with other CLI tools like PowerShell's Invoke Web Request and Curl, which do not currently implement the mark of the web. Um, so look out for that in the next release. Um, I don't have a date for that yet, um, but we are on 9.2 right now. Um, anyone might have noticed that 9.3 was released upstream yesterday. So we'll be taking a look at those changes and getting them pulled in. Um, so look out for a release with the Mark of the Web changes and uh, the upstream changes shortly. Great, thanks for the update, Tess. Um, next up, we have Andrew giving an update update on PS desired state configuration. Hello, everybody. So, um, uh, 
Just want to do a quick update on the PS Desired State Configuration um, module. So uh, recently we released the patched version um, 206, uh, which has uh, basically mostly bug fixes on top of, of on top of the previous V2 version, which was uh, 205, uh, with uh, two notable exceptions. So there is in the repo there is a change log, which lists all the details, but uh, two major changes, well, not changes, two, ma two ma major updates is that the invoke DSC resource uh, was uh, moved out of the from the uh, experimental uh, feature flag. So now it's available as soon as you load the module. So you don't need to jump around with like enable an experimental feature and stuff like that. And uh, another stuff which does not uh, impact functionality but might be useful to some people is now that the module is shipped with software bill of materials um, that might come in handy in some situations. Uh, and the rest of them are just um, uh, bug fixes. So the module is available on PS Gallery. Um, and uh, one thing to note is that if you install the module from the gallery without the required version flag or um, without allow pre-release flag, if you just type in install module name PS Desire State Configuration, it will install the latest stable version, which now is the new updated V2. So um, like uh, which should not have any um, like if you're using uh, 205, the previous V2 version, um, you should not see any uh, changes in the behavior again, except for bug fixes. Uh, so that should not impact you. But if you want to use, you know, the, the prior version, you might want to add that required version uh, flag to the end of it. Um, so yeah, um, please try out the new V2 uh, of the module. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. Thanks for the update there. Um, next up, we have Andy giving an update on our VS Code extension. Um, yeah, I can give another um, update while Andy is getting back, which um, is not on the agenda item, but I did want to mention, which is we have some conferences coming up and the PowerShell team is planning on attending. So um, next month at the end of April, there'll be PS Summit North America, which is happening in Bellevue. Um, I think we have about five sessions there. And we're really looking forward to getting back with the community in person and connecting with everyone. Um, and then officially, we also got approval to come to PSConf EU in June, which we're also really excited about. So there'll be four of us heading um, out to PSConf EU to connect with the European audience as well. So really looking forward to seeing a lot of you um, in person over the next few months as well. Um, let's see. I am back. 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 That's fine. Okay. Yes. All Perfect right. So we're going to click share and here we go. Okay. So I've got um, VS Code. This is our not major big new change, but the old preview extension here on the left hand side, this is going away. Don't worry if you've got it installed. We're going to be migrating you all automatically. But if you look at the marketplace at just the regular PowerShell extension now, you'll see this new switch to pre release version. And this is how we're going to be releasing essentially our previews going forward or in the newer nomenclature, the pre release versions. So you can just click this button. Um, it will hey, go Andy. ahead. Hey, oh. Andy, sorry to interrupt, but you're not sharing right oh. now. Is it not sharing? Grr. Okay. Uh, one more second. <laughs> I still see a frozen image of Andy on my screen. Same. I do as well, and I'm not sure how we're I, going to get I out think, of this I think state. Teams is confused. Uh, do you, we're going to add a third version, and we're going to see if it works. <laughs> um, can I do this? Oh. Okay. Now yeah, I see that. I can that see it now. Computer. Yeah. That works? Okay, this looks Yay. good. Yeah. All right. Back Great. to the programming. So back to the actual, yeah, okay, I'm actually going to swap this back to the original here um, and do a quick reload so we can actually show this how it goes through. So we'll reload. I think I have to do one second. I had it up on the other computer and it was good to go. Okay, so if you go into the extensions nowadays and, you know, you're 
you want to install PowerShell extension. Right now you see uh, two of these, and this is what I was showing. This this preview extension is how we've been shipping previewed versions of PowerShell, and we kind of had to ask all of you to like, install this other extension, and if you needed to switch, you needed to uninstall it. See that big old block of text like, hey, don't have both installed. You'd have to uninstall it and install the other. This extension is going away. Don't worry if you have it installed. We are going to automatically migrate people over. Um, the regular PowerShell extension here now has a switch to pre-release version button. Um, this was a, a long way feature in VS Code themselves. We waited a little while to be sure that we could adopt it with how we do our own releases, and it's working great for other extensions. So we moved forward with this yesterday. You can click switch to pre-release version on the regular PowerShell extension, um, and that will go ahead and install. Now it just swapped over the one that yesterday, 3.3. One. I'm going to click reload, um, and we can look at that again, and you'll notice it's got, it doesn't reload perfectly all the time, but it's got the preview icon over here. It is indeed installing the preview version of 3.1. Um, you'll see that it'll note pre-release, and if you need to swap back, instead of like having to uninstall an extension, you can just click switch to release version again, um, which you'll see in the change log, like this is the latest preview. Um, the main thing in this preview was the pre-release extension feature. In the last community call, we talked about all of the new symbol work. Um, that project is pretty much it's finished and closed up now. Um, we had a couple bug fixes come through. Uh, we had region support get added into the outline. So if you use like hashtag region and hashtag end region symbols, those will show up in your outline. That was from a community member who kind of helped prod me into this entire project. Um, so yeah, if you want to use the preview now, uh, don't even worry about that other extension. If you want to switch immediately, go ahead and you can uninstall it and install the regular one and click switch to pre-release. Um, for anyone who's not getting that information, they're going to be moved. Um, but yeah, you just get a nice little toggle. And it's it's a small thing, but it's one we were really looking forward to. So give that a try. Um, they're, they're consolidated now. Uh, yeah, enjoy. Awesome, very exciting stuff. Thank you, Andy. And now we can move on to our community demos. So first up, we have the Windows Terminal Shell Integration Demo by Mike. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Mike Greasy. I'm an engineer on the Windows Terminal. Uh, the uh, PowerShell folks asked me to come here today and demo something that we've been working on with them and with our friends over on uh, VS Code. Uh, so. I'm here today to just talk about that and uh, get a little bit of feedback on the design and you know how we actually want the back end of this to work. Uh, so what we've built here is a uh, graphical interface for command line applications to use to display a list of suggestions to in the terminal, right? Uh, so this is something that obviously PowerShell can use, but uh, we also want applications like Vim to be able to use it or any shell in the world. Um, so I'm just gonna show it first and please bear with me. This is very prototypical code. There are a lot of rough edges and uh, I'm doing it live. So uh, this is what the menu kind of looks like right now. So it's just like a little graphical list of all your completion results. And then you just say, yeah, I want you know this option, right? And uh, it populates from PowerShell itself, so it's actually it knows all the flags and stuff. Um, and the tooltips, while they seem kind of silly right now, those are coming from PowerShell, so we could put something more sensible in there. Uh, now you might be asking yourself, why? Why are we doing this? Um, you know, we've already got menu complete. Menu complete is great. Um, so for those of you who don't know. Um, Yes, menu complete is really cool. You know, you get a little list of all of your tab completion options right there so you can visually see them all. Um, it's really helpful, especially for someone like me who doesn't necessarily know all the ins and outs of all the different commands and flags and stuff. Uh, but from a screen reader perspective, menu complete is pretty much horrible because screen readers don't really know what to do with this. All they see is text on the screen. And so when you move the selection around, it doesn't say, you know, selected one of six, two of six, three of six. It says the entire menu again. And it doesn't even like really indicate like the default 
formatting is just to highlight the selected option, a screen reader isn't going to say selected PS read line option. It's just going to say set PS read line option. And that is horrible, right? Like you don't get to really use this menu uh, if you're using a screen reader. So the whole purpose of this menu is to provide an actual uh, semantic experience to screen readers. So the terminal itself can hook up the UIA pattern and say, you know, this is a list of suggestions. You have selected one of six. You have selected two of six. You have selected three of six. Set PS key, right? Um, so that's kind of what we're building. It's driven by uh, VT sequences, by ANSI escape sequences. So basically, wherever your running PowerShell generates a serialized menu, sends it over the wire to whatever terminal is on the other side. Uh, for the terminal to actually display the menu. So we're not trying to do like heuristics and try and guess what the flags are or what the commands should be. Uh, so we don't have to deal with like versioning issues where like the version of curl you're running on your uh, nano server is totally different than the one you have locally installed. No, we're not going to mess with any of that. PowerShell is going to tell us exactly what we should display and we're going to display that. Um, and it's again not necessarily specific to PowerShell. I've only really implemented it for PowerShell right now because, um, you know, this is a prototype. Uh, but we'd like to do this for Zeesh or Fish or Vim, right? Like Vim's got little drop down menus too for completions. No reason that they couldn't also reuse the same infrastructure. Uh, so I'm going to put a uh, link into the chat and. Uh, Obviously, the protocol we are using right now is insane. We are serializing the tab completion results to JSON and then passing that to the terminal. No one should actually do that. Uh, so we kind of want some feedback. What kinds of pieces of information should we put in the menu? Um, how should we actually serialize this? Um, how can we integrate this with different shells? That's the kind of feedback we're looking for. Uh, this isn't shipping necessarily anytime soon. But if you do want to try it out, you can go check out this branch, this pull request in the terminal repo, and uh, build it yourself and uh, hook it up. Um, that's basically what I have to share. Um, I would love feedback. Awesome. Thank you so much for that demo and for coming to our call today. Um, see some applause and thumbs up for that for sure and um, maybe some more feedback in the chat as well. Uh, next up, we have Justin Grody giving um, a demo on PowerShell Assistant. Hey, everybody, can you hear me okay? Yep. Great. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to show off a little thing that I've just been kind of working on. Um, you know, these days, all the various AIs and chat GPTs and open AIs are all the rage. So I kind of wanted to take my own shot at it. Um, one thing I want to point out is that there is an excellent module that um, exists called PowerShell AI by Doug Fink. Um, this is a very nice comprehensive tool. All the engine and stuff is written in PowerShell. Really nice if you haven't seen it. Really nice way to sort of utilize the chat GPT uh, API and, and such. And you can just sign up for an API key that you get like $15 worth of credit, which will last you forever. So this and this is a wonderful module. I just you know I I kind of wanted to take a different approach. One thing I wanted to try was I wanted to try making a module from the actual Open API specification. So basically they published this just YAML file that basically describes how the whole interface works. And it's a big long file that you don't need to know anything about. But one thing you can do is you can take a file like this and uh, convert it into C sharp code. And so since PowerShell basically runs on C sharp, you can actually then take that and use that as an interface. So I made this thing called PowerShell Assistant. And so with PowerShell Assistant, uh, once you install it using the lovely PowerShell Git version three, um, this is just a little pre-release that's out there. Oh, I got it already running in my session, but. Um, so you get a few different commands here. You get some chat commands, AI chats, but we're just gonna kind of focus in on the chat ones, just a simple demo. So you can do something like AI chat, like I wanna know how to join the PowerShell community call. And so what this will do is this will go out and once it's all set up, it uses that generated API to go out and get instructions and then issue the information. And uh, you'll see it gives you this nice textual output. So one thing that's kind of interesting about this is that even though this is textual output here, this is actually um, all done with formatting. And PowerShell, like the actual formatting system is actually really powerful. So if we look at this thing, it's not just me doing write host. This is the actual object here. 
But if we look at it in like format list, we can see it's got all that fancy type stuff that you know we're usually used to. But if we go to each individual object, it is actually the full object. So even though you get this nice text representation at the console, you still have all the information that you need to process the request if you want to do something else with it. So if I, for instance, convert to JSON, or whoops, convert to, you can see it's got all the, all those different details of what that chant conversation looks like. And so that's really nice. And one thing that about this too is because you can you can save these things off, like you can tee it off to a variable. Um, you know, like I can say, uh, um, you know, I can ask why is Jeffrey so rad? And I can tee that to a variable. And I get my answer there. But then I can continue this conversation. Like I can save it off and then later continue this conversation, you know, with something else. So this all just uses the same chat GPT interface. And so, and in the background, one thing that's really nice too is if you kind of go with the verbose on this. Uh, you'll get this nice little message that'll actually tell you how much that last one cost. So doing that completion, I can see how much this all comes from the API. I can see how much that individual uh, query that I did cost. So we have this really nice kind of way of interacting with objects as a sort of command line way. And so then we can build a UI on top of that. So if I want to do something with PowerShell, um, this chat, and if you do command chat here, oops, uh, uh, chat is just uh, git chat. And if you don't know this, any command that has a git behind it, you can just shorthand it to the name in front of it. So like for instance, child item instead of git child item, et cetera. So I'm just gonna do chat and I'm just gonna do something. Chat, this chat client is pre-optimized to give you PowerShell code. And so you can see here, I just wanted to fetch the latest weather model. It's like, okay, great, it gave me some code. And actually I want that to format it as a list. And this is all just using that same AI chat on the back end, but doing all the same kind of queries um, but giving you a real nice chat format like you'd expect in sort of the chat GPT. And you'll notice um, for anywhere that there's a PowerShell block of code, it um, highlights it. And so it's able to detect when there's PowerShell code in there and provide it. And so when I finish my chat, one thing I can do is I can now look at my clipboard and that code that it gave me is now in my clipboard. So if I wanna take that and now just test it, now I get my result of what comes back from that API. So that's a real handy way to interact. Like if you have a quick question about PowerShell or any of that kind of stuff, and you want to use ChatGPT to kind of figure that kind of thing out, um, it's super useful for that kind of thing. And then one other thing that I just got done implementing is um, this took a lot of work to get working, but there's the ability to actually stream the output in real time as opposed to have to wait for the results. So today we'll write a sonnet about the PowerShell community call. I think it's a little bigger. And so now you get a streaming result as the data comes in in real time of, of whatever the uh, chat is there. So it's something fun that I've been working on. Um, it's a really interesting model of how to utilize, like, an, uh, again, all the core engine of that. Whoops, I forgot to show one last piece here. Um, all the core engine of that is just simply this underlying client that gets auto-generated and it's got all the methods for me. So I didn't have to learn how the API works. I don't have to learn you know, I have to write my own objects or write my own models and everything's nicely, strongly typed. So all these results that come back from all these different things, like if I, you know, that, that item I have for my chat, all of those are all strongly typed objects that are all able to be manipulated and worked with and um, tie into other, other applications. So it's real, real, um, real nice, interesting way to like, just start with just a YAML file that's provided and, uh, and go forward and then from that produce a whole client that has really nice formatting, but then you still get all the same objects without having to use like write host or that kind of thing. Uh, Steve, you had a question. I think I saw your hand raised. Uh, it's more of a comment. So so first off, this is really awesome. And I know that there's, uh, besides you, like Doug Fink has also done a bunch of stuff with uh, AI with PowerShell. So it yeah. should be no surprise, um, you know, that the PowerShell team is also looking at some of these uh, opportunities as well. Um, so one of the things I'm going to just put out there for the community, like, you know, if you guys have um, ideas on how to have a more natural integration with PowerShell, like via PS Reline, feel free to open up issues in the PS Reline repo. Where we've been thinking about it ourselves. It's a kind of difficult problem. And having a command with a quoted natural language string for me is not the best experience. Um, you know, if you didn't have to quote it and then PowerShell doesn't 
try to parse your input. That might be a little bit more, uh, better for like uh, newer users. So again, if you have ideas, uh, put it in the PHP line uh, repo. I think that's probably the best place for now, and then we can try to try to do some experiments, and then maybe we can integrate it with like some of these uh, modules. Sounds like a great idea. So yeah, so that that's the quick demo, and so again, I'll uh, put the link to the repo in the chat. Um, and unfortunately, I went to all this trouble to do all this streaming when I could have just did what Doug did here and just sleep every character. I was like, why don't I think of that? It's so much easier. <laughs> why did I waste all my time? But uh, all right, so thanks everybody. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. And again, the module is available sort of a pre-release. It is out there as an alpha. It's going to constantly change and have breaking changes. So obviously, you don't rely on it, but it's just kind of a fun thing to play with. And of course, there's Doug's module, which is uh, just basically the same thing, just a different approach. So thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you so much for the demo, Justin. Very cool to see. Um, and with that, that concludes our agenda for today's community call. We have plenty of time for questions. Um, so I'll see if there are any questions in the chat or if anyone would like to raise their hand and ask a question. That is wonderful as well. If we don't have any questions, we can wrap this one up a little bit early, but I want to give another second to see if anyone um, had any questions. They've already posted in the chat that didn't get answered, or um, please post you, them again. Did you check the discussion? I I haven't checked. I have. I do have it up. Yeah, I have not seen any um, additional posts there. Um, Gail asked Jim if the repo is open or if you have a link to that for what you demoed today. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. A, oh, sorry, it's a text utility mod, uh, repo that I posted earlier. It will be checked in there. Awesome. I think there's a pull request out, in fact, against it. Well, um, if we don't have any additional questions, um, I won't hold you all here. Um, thank you so much for attending our call today. We look forward to seeing you again next month. And as I mentioned, hopefully seeing some of you in person over the next few months as well. So um, thank you everyone for joining today.